We are now going to be looking at some further deductions which are not necessarily discussed in section 11. These are still deductions and allowances, just not in section 11. The first one is section 12 H, capital H, which is the deduction or allowance that we get if we have a learnership agreement with someone. Now, this is a very important section in the South African context. South Africa has a severe skill shortage. We have very low education levels. So this is an attempt by the government to get employers to put employees on learnership programs. And these are learnership programs which must be registered with CETA, which is your Skills Development Authority in South Africa. And basically, the idea is here to encourage people, so they'll say, if you put, so let me just, I like to just have something on screen. If X Limited has people working for it, right? And these people are on learnerships. The idea is that you can claim, you'll pay these guys salaries and wages, you can claim that as a deduction, plus you get an additional learnership allowance under Section 12H for these guys. So this is something which a lot of big companies in South Africa, and smaller ones obviously, but a lot of big ones that can employ a lot of learners take a lot of advantage of. Now, how it works, I want you to understand from the start, is that we get two types of allowances for learnerships. So this is your starting point. You get an annual allowance and you get a completion allowance. Now, the annual allowance you get for every year that the person is involved in a learnership with you. The completion allowance you get when it is completed, because not everybody completes it. So let me just explain to you. So X Limited enters into a three year learnership with Mr. A. Okay, now, year one, year two, and year three. Year one, you will get an annual allowance. Year two, you will get your annual allowance. Year three, you will get your annual allowance. Plus, you will get the completion allowance. Now, let's just quickly look at a figure before we're looking at everything. Let's say it's 40,000 rands a year. So just from this one employee, you get 40,000 rands there, 40,000 rands there, 40,000 rands there for the annual. And you'll see now, I'll explain in a second, but you'll get three times 40,000 rands. So 120,000 rands for completion. So 40, 40, 40, so 120, plus another 120, 240,000 rands in tax deductions that you got from employing this person in a learnership. If you have five people, that's a million rands in tax deductions that you're getting. Additional, so you can still get their, learn their salaries and everything as well. So guys, this is a great initiative for employers. So how does it work? So first up, this annual allowance must be apportioned. So before I now continue everything, it's 40,000 rands. Now let's say your tax year as the employer runs from the 1st of January until the 31st of December. Okay? And you enter into this agreement on the 1st of August. So August, September, October, November, December. So August to December is four months. Then you'll say 40,000 times four over 12. You have to apportion it. Okay. It's only the annual one that must be apportioned. There's no apportionment for the completion one. I'll talk about the completion one in a second. Okay. How much do you get? If the employee, the learner, is doing something which is registered in QF level 1 to 6, you get 40,000 rands. So those are your basic education ones. You get 40,000 rands per learnership per year. If it's a 7 to 10, you get 20,000 rands. So these are the higher education. Because we, we're trying to still encourage the lower levels, that's why it's a little bit different there. Okay, but 20,000. Very important that you see that. Quickly over here, if the learner has a disability, you can add an extra 20,000 rands, so plus 20 over here, to make that 60,000. And you can add an extra 30,000 for the NKF level 7 to 10 to make that 50,000. Okay, so they encourage employers to have people with disabilities. Okay, there we go. So that is their annual one. How does the completion one work? The completion one works as follows. It says, if you give this 
if this learnership is for less than 24 full months, so one month, two months, three months, all the way up until 23 months, it can't be full 24 months, so less than two full years, then you get a once-off amount. Okay, so let me go back to this example. X Limited enters into a, I'm going to just change it here for now, two-year learnership with Mr. A. This is how it will work. Okay, two-year learnership with Mr. A. We're not going to do any apportionment or anything strange like this. So year one, he gets the annual of 40,000. Well, let's actually call this, not two years, let's call this um, enters into a 18 month learnership. Okay. Year two, I'm just assuming it worked out that we did it in the beginning of year one. So year two will be 40,000 times 6 over 12. Because years times 12 over 12, and years times 6 over 12, because it's 18 months. All right? Just go with me for the example. I'm just trying to show you it's less than 24 full months. Right, in year two though, you'll also get the completion allowance then, and the completion allowance is just one of the 40,000. Now, let's compare this to a situation where you have 24 full months or more. Then you get the amount for every full 12 month period. So that, let's say you had it for 24 months exactly. Then in year two, you will get the annual allowance of 40,000 as well, plus the completion. Now, how the completion works is it says, if you take those months, 24, and you divide it by 12, what do you get? 2. That answer, 40,000 times that answer, 2, is then what you get. So it was 36 months, it would be divided by 3, so this would be year 3 then, you'd say times 3, 40,000 times 3. Now, important, they say it must be full months. So what does that mean? Okay, so let's say you did it for 30 months. If you say 30 divided by 12, you get 2.5. That 0.5 there, you don't get anything for it. You just get it for a full 12 months. You get it for 12 24, 36, 48, etc. You get it. All right, and again, you add it, you increase it with the disability allowance. Now, guys, I'm going to quickly show you where we find it in the Act. So, first one is in addition to any deductions allowed in terms of the Act, where during the year of assessment, a learner who holds a qualification, which is an NKF level 1 up into NKF level 6, right? is in a registered learnership agreement and is a part of the trade of the carrier, they must be allowed to be deducted from that trade an amount of 40,000 rands. Right? So this is the annual allowance. And I'm going to just show you which one I'm talking about here. We're talking about this one over here. Okay. This one over here. So this is section 12. H two. Okay. Now, where learner is party to register learnership agreement for a period of less than twelve full months during the year, the amount that is allowed to be deducted must be limited to an amount which bears to an amount of forty thousand rands, the same ratio as the number of full months bears to twelve. So what they're saying here, let's say you only had it for five months. You must apportion it. That's what they, where that rule comes from. Right, and there's this year they tell you, if a registered learnership agreement is registered within a period of 12 months after the last day of the year of assessment, it must be deemed to be so registered on the date when it was entered into. So this is, remember, you have to, so I'll enter into an agreement with an employee today, right, let's say 1 January. I enter into the learnership agreement. Now I still have to go to CETA and CETA has to approve it. So what this says is, 12 months after the year, the tax year has ended. So at the end of the next tax year. If CETA then finally approves it, you can go back and assume that it was there from the 1st of January. So this is just to allow people to be able to get approval from, for learnership even after it has been entered into. Okay, not too common to see, I expect that. Okay, and now we go, section 2A. 
In, ad in addition to any deductions allowed, this is for NQF level 7 up until 10, which is a learnership agreement, which is in the trade. There must be allowed in the trade an amount of 20,000 rands. So guys, it's this rule over here. Section 12H2A. So you'll see all the NKF level 7 to 10 has these, this capital A next to it. Okay, same rule here. You must apportion it. Right, same rule, same everything. You'll see they're written exactly the same. Now you're looking at the completion allowance, number three. So it says, in addition to any deductions allowed, where during any year for assessment, a learner who holds a qualification level, NKF level 1 to 6, right, which is parted to a registered learnership agreement for a period of less than 24 full months, and it was entered into for the trade of the employer. And now, important, it has been successfully completed. Can you see there? They must be allowed in that year an amount of 40,000 rands. Now, guys, see which one we're talking about here. Less than 24 full months completion. So that is this rule over here. Section 12H3. Right? Then 3A is if it's the NKF level 7 up until 10, it has been completed, then it is 20,000. Okay, so it's still the same block. Section 12H, 3A. Previous one was section 12H, 3. Okay, so let's go and find this block now here. Find the number 4. This is now... Sorry, let me just go back. The previous one, 3A guys also, less than 24 full months. There's that rule. See now, now you're going to see it exceeds 24 full months. NKF level 1 up until 6, and it has been completed. You get 40,000 rands multiplied by the number of consecutive 12-month periods. So it's this rule over here that we're seeing. So that is section 12H4. And then 4A, you know what's coming. 7 up until 10. Period that equals or exceeds 24 full months. That has been completed. You get 20,000 multiplied number of consecutive 12 months. Right, so section 12H4A. Now, this rule here about the disability, that it increases, we are learner contemplated in sections 2, 3, or 4. This is NQF 1 to 6. And the person has a disability. The learnership agreement, the amount contemplated, must be increased by 20,000 rands. There's this one over here, section 12H5, and then what do you think 5A is going to be for 2A, 3A, and 4A? This is NQF 7 to 10. Remember guys, we saw here, I'm just going to remind you, 4A, 3A, 2A. Those are every time the NQF 7 to 10. The 2 3 and 4 is 1 to 6. Okay, so this is how you should study it and flag it for yourself. If you remember it clearly, and you have a disability, it must be increased by an amount of 30,000 rands. So there's 30,000 word in there. Section 12H5A. Okay, guys, very simple section. If you flag it correctly and you use it like I did in the act day, those keywords I showed you, I would recommend you highlight 1 to 6, um, the registered learnership agreement, and the amount that can be deducted. So remember, number 2 is the annual allowance, and number 3 is we start talking about it being completed. So look for the word completed, and look for less than 24 full months. Look for the word completed, and exceeds 24 full months. That's how I would recommend that you flag it.